Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Carla, and I'm here on Giving Hearts Day. And I have a special guest who we're going to introduce in a moment. But today's topic is sort of all about what happens when you go through some tragedy, some grief, some hard times in your life, and you might feel like there's no way out or no way to go. And how do you start coming out of that? And today I'm really excited to have Jody Plessy here. And we are going to kind of talk through her story, um, what she's done now, what she's doing in the nonprofit world, and what we can do as a medical fitness facility kind of to get you through some of those times and get you to a better place in life. So Jody, I'm going to let you tell your background on your, uh, like your role as like your businesses, your nonprofits, but also I kind of want you to talk through, um, as much as you're willing to share kind of about some of the tragedy and some of the harder things that you essentially had to go through to get to where you are today. Well, <laughs> how long is this? <laughs> no, we know we only have a half hour. Uh, so, well, I guess to start, so I'm an entrepreneur and I have been for 20 plus years, uh, a serial entrepreneur, you could say. I've never been in the profit, nonprofit world until the last few years. And of course, that started with the passion and change of my life that sparked that. Um, but I, I was just spiraling down a really bad path in my life for my entire life, you could say, up till I was like 37 years old. Just, Are you talking from like high school on yeah. or even through high school? Yeah, yeah, even through high school. So like early adolescence, like teenage years, you okay. know, I actually, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day how my grandparents all died when I was really young and my grandpa died when I was just before I turned, you know, a teenager. And I thought about like, you know, it was my last surviving grandparent. And I thought, gee, if I would have had that, maybe things would have been different. You know, I yeah. kind of had that trigger mark because grandparents are grandparents. You yep. know, they're, we love them, love them. And they're always a role, positive role model for you. And yes. Uh, but my family, my parents were gone a lot. And when I was growing up younger, my mom was a nurse. She worked a lot of long hours and my dad was away a lot with construction. And, uh, you know, we just didn't really do a lot as like a family together, it seemed. And I kind of connected to some cousins and got into a group of people where that was kind of my family, you know, when you're young like that and you have your little groups and, yep. and stuff. And <clears throat> I always, you know, I've worked since I was 14 years old. I've always had a job in film. I was always a go getter. I like to have my own money to buy things in my car, <laughs> put gas in it so I could cruise around or whatever and did all of that through high school. And, you know, I partied a lot prayed, drank, smoked, was doing all that and continued actually through, so through high school um, as well. I was a partier. I didn't get very good grades in school, <laughs> whether or not it's because I was busy partying or not, but, um, and I actually, my husband, I had gotten married. Uh, I was with someone in high school and then out of high school, uh, a couple of years later, we got married and just everything seemed to spiral like from that point and I was married for you know 17 years before I got divorced and always wanted children like I've, I've always loved kids I'm still a big kid at heart even my little nephew I mean I I'm gonna be I'm 46 years old and I'm just kind of like the fun auntie and, <laughs> you know hey let's go climb this snow mountain or you know yep. so I, I love children I've always wanted children and went through I ended up gaining weight started gaining weight you know after I got married and was still drinking not eating right and uh, always wanted to be I was always the life at the party like in the party mm -hmm. scene yep and I always tried to help everyone else I was always like the person that would be there for everybody to help them and I always like looking back now I always put myself on the back burner you know, and, yep. and I'm like, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so unfortunately I dug myself in a pretty deep, deep hole over about 20 years of my life and got, had a couple pregnancies where I was pregnant. Uh, I had some early miscarriages. And then when I was like 36 years old, I got pregnant and actually ended up caring till about 20 weeks. And I just went into like preterm labor 
but then my water broke and everything and uh he was actually born alive he did live ernie what's his name ernest ernie ernie i know it's cute it's one of my i have a little <laughs> tattoo on my that's his footprint actually that's all awesome. <laughs> and he lived for about an hour and 15 minutes on his own okay uh i wasn't able to unfortunately hold him because i was having problems with um delivering my placenta i was actually getting prepped for surgery because that, that wasn't coming out Yep. So uh, finally, when that did, then he had passed and went through that. It was a pretty traumatic experience for me, um, just because obviously a child, like a mother losing a child like that, it just should not happen. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I was, I went through some pretty, a pretty hard hit depression there. And then I got pregnant again within about the next year with Andy and got, uh, I got about 20 weeks along, you know, when they checked the, the sex and everything. And they, at Sanford or at Fargo here, they came back in and they were like, I was like, something's not right. And the doctor sat down next to me and he's just like, this child has the severest like form of spina bifida and myelomental seal, you know, the lemon head, like all that stuff. And, they immediately sent me down to uh, the Minnesota Children's Hospital because they just don't deal with that stuff here. Yep. So within two days, I had an appointment down there. So I drove down there and I, man, the U of M, like what, I was going through such an awful situation, but the experience I had there, like after leaving there a few days with all the teaching the students and everybody that was there, like I was totally comfortable with what was going on and the decisions I had to make. They just made it, they were so knowledgeable in like showing you everything and the imagery. So you got a lot of education. Oh so yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so anyways, so I had to make the decision. They, he actually had eight segments open in his back. They didn't close. Okay. So I was like 23 weeks by now. And, uh, they were concerned for my health because fluid was spilling in and out of me. And they actually wanted to admit me. They weren't going to let me leave. They're like, well, if you decide to continue this pregnancy, we're just going to keep you in the hospital until you go into labor because that he had basically had no function from here down. Okay. So <clears throat> I, I had gone home and actually this was a horrible day. They actually wanted to send me through an abortion clinic <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And then they're like, well, insurance might not cover this or that. That's another story that we can talk about. But I was like, well, I'm going to be in a hospital if I'm going to deliver him. And, and they said, well, we can just induce you naturally. I said, yep, that's what we're going to do because that's what I felt needed to be done. Yep. And I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, you know, of that. Right. So went home and came back about five, six days later. And because um, they had to set it all up and things. And I mean, I basically had to make the decision that that was, that was a key turning point in my life because I felt like part of me was having to sacrifice um, my child for my life. And it actually, it actually ended up being a pretty miraculous turning point in my life. And after that happened, I delivered him and, you know, he didn't survive birth. I actually felt him when he passed and, you know, we just, I held him and I spent time with him. And from that point on, I was like, I really needed to take a good look at my health. And I started working all day. And that's the thing I had stopped drinking, smoking, you know, I was doing drugs, everything. Like I quit doing all that. And all of a sudden my relationship started changing. My, my, I was still married at the time and I was going to physical therapy at a place I won't disclose, but um, for about eight months and it just wasn't doing me justice. And I was working out so hard. I was kind of taking my depression out on that. Yep, and, and I was injuring myself because I was losing weight. And I, I mean, I was over 300 pounds, you guys. That's the other thing. So I basically lost, you know, half my body weight through just diet and exercise. And, you know, honestly, I, I just remember and I tell this story and I don't know what everyone's spiritual aspects are, but I was in my second story house uh, on the second floor. And I was, I remember thinking that I just did not want to live anymore. And I was just like, if there, 
whatever it is in the world, if there's something out there to help me, like, please send it to me, <laughs> honestly. And um, uh, after that, I talked to my therapist, my physical therapist guy, and I was like, is there someone that can help me like with my workouts and stuff? He wrote a name on a, a yellow sticky note. <laughs> and I went to a chiropractic office and Dr. Miles was sitting in the corner as an intern, a quiet intern that hadn't <laughs> even gone to school yet. And the next thing I knew, you guys, he it like, it's like my guardian angel appeared in my life. And I know that doesn't happen for everyone, <laughs> but I, I, looking back, I just, my life has just been such a crazy whirlwind the last seven years since I, I met Miles, we became really good friends. And he basically just started to build me back up. Next thing I know, I'm training off ice hockey at Burgraff. I don't even skate. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I over here doing? But a lot of it's hip stuff, you know, and it's exactly what I needed. So I'm here training. I wasn't crushing it. I'm like, okay, well, this is like rehab, whatever. And now that I've met Dr. Miles and know that he's super passionate about hockey, he probably, thought, <laughs> oh. he probably didn't know at the time, but like, yeah, this makes my hips strong. Why doesn't Jody go make her? Yeah. Strong? So I'm over there and he spent a lot of his time, you know, he was still a student at NDSU training me, you know, and, and stuff. And then I was getting chiropractic here too from the chiropractor I was seeing. And uh, yeah, my life just crazy. The next thing I know, all my relationships were like gone out of my life. I was filing for divorce. I was just like, I was trying to be healthy and all of those people were not healthy to me. All of them. You know, there was, I was in a toxic marriage and I'm just like, it just, I basically picked up the rug and shook it off. I had a chance to like start my life over. And I'm so grateful for that because I just, I mean, I was on a downward spiral where I was, my health, there was going to be something bad happening for sure. And so found out, so Miles started threading me through like different cleansing stuff. And I'm just like, give me, like, I trusted my life change, like what was going on. I, I trusted him and I'm just like, give me it. What do you got? You know, liver cleanse, this cleanse. I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, because I was like, it was feeling good. I was starting to feel yeah. better. Yeah. And, and then finally we find out, found out the final diagnosis for me was I have Hashimoto's autoimmune. I was diabetic. I was taking diabetic medication. I do not take any medication now. And uh, there was some significant auto or uh, food immune reactivity testing that we had done. I had a high peanut allergy, some other things, and, and they were really affecting me. We did some GI testing and, and I'm like, wow. And so we removed these few things and I'm just like, why didn't anybody tell me this before? Like, you know, I shake my head. I was just talking to a gal the other day about that. And it just blew my mind that, you know, we, we go to, you know, the MD and I'm not, I don't want to not, I mean, there's excellent MD doctors out there but we get sucked into this conventional way of medicine and you're bouncing around from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. And, you know, it's like, what's the root core of this person's problem? Like, it's not, okay, so they're not sleeping at night, they're depressed, this and that. Well, what's causing those things? You, that doesn't just like happen to people. You have something systemic or something that's happened in your life that's triggering those things right you know and then we have to live by what our genetics say too so obviously what's going on in our body what's going on in our army inside of us and it's just it's been so fun actually and I'm kind of I don't know if you want to say addicted to health now but I'm just <laughs> like I'm very in tune with my body now and when I get one little thing and I'm like I talked to Dr. Miles or whatever I'm just, he's just like Sometimes he's like, I think you have a problem, <laughs> a problem that I want to be healthy. Like I want to live my best, healthiest life from here on out. Like I regret all my past like life. It obviously taught me lessons, but man, it was hard. That was a hard situation to go through. And this is what sparked people's raising Academy. Obviously I was just so blown away. Like, how can we help other people? Like, how can I be a voice for people? that are lead, leading these this chronic pain and suffering it doesn't need to happen right and I think people just think it's normal like I'm getting older yeah my knee hurts well you know this or that but it's just like I don't know so if I can just be a platform and I I really see a lot of parallels when you know you were sitting in your house thinking like man I don't know if I want to live anymore yeah. um, you know and I hope that if anybody else is in that situation they reach out to you or I because neither of us are 
therapists. No. But we know that we can help people. And I think the thing is, is like you started with one thing, um, right? So like you started exercising and you're like, okay, it made me feel better, but I, I maybe did it too much. Yeah. Uh, and I started breaking down in other ways. And so I think if you can get people started on like, okay, we know that they all play a factor. Like your body was super inflamed, mm-hmm. uh, probably from years of drinking and drugs, was your kidney and your liver was, they probably weren't loving you. Uh, food allergies, so your gut's inflamed, which means your whole body's inflamed, which means you have brain fog and you can't think clearly. Um, you have all these things pooling in. And for you, you show this like, okay, I'm going to just start exercising, mm-hmm. which I think is a great one because I think a lot of people think, Hey, I can move my body. Um, and like you use Dr. Miles as the help of like, Hey, what's my voice of reason for like my gut, my GI, like, mm-hmm. uh, and so whether, whatever Avenue you take, like just that first step yeah. in that process of then understanding, Oh, I can feel better than I do right now. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're going through addiction or grief or loss or, you know, divorce or family trauma, like whatever it is, it's like, take that one step. Yeah. That one could lead into all the steps. And, but you know, what was hardest for me, Carla is asking is to actually say the words I need help. Yep. Yeah. It's hard. It is hard. It's one of the hardest things to say, but I tell you, it's one of the best things I ever did in my life. I agree. (laughs) And I was willing to like try, you know, I'm just like, I need help, help me. And you know, to look in someone's eyes and like say that. And they were like, okay, (laughs) you know, and and I know a lot of times you might not get that answer or be as lucky as I was to to find that initial person, but I can be that person. If you, you know, like you said, I'm not a therapist, but I'm willing to help you. Like we've been on the Today Show talking the last few, you know, six weeks. And every week I'm getting call phone calls and emails after every segment or, you know, if Dr. Miles is talking about chronic pain and things like that, or, and, and people are reaching out and they're just talking to me. And I'm like, it's a, like, that's what I want because a lot of times someone just needs, like they just need an ear even to listen or to give them a little bit of hope that you know, things can change, you know? And I think one thing that's really isolating about going through really hard experiences is the isolation factor where you think like, I'm the only one, Yeah. like this doesn't happen to anybody else. And Mm so I thank you for sharing your story because I think some people don't realize that somebody else has been there. Um, They walked in their shoes and that you can do something about Mm -hmm. it. Um, So I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, Yeah. I find it comical. I, I run into people like this too. And I've had moments in my life where I almost become a little obsessed about the next healthy thing. Um, what can I do to make myself just 1% better, 1% better? Um, and sometimes it's just that person just say like, just take a step back and breathe, right? Like, um, let's just not overthink it. And like, we can readdress it. Um, I've been there, I've done that. So I kind of chuckled when you said that. Um, and I've had patients who are in the same exact boat. Um, <laughs> well, Miles, is, it's funny because I've asked him, you know, I always confide in him about the functional medicine, my stuff. And he's like, nothing. I'm like, what can I do? He's like, nothing. He's like, go relax. I'm like, oh, <laughs> watch a Netflix series. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> so it's like nothing. <laughs> so sometimes nothing. Chill. And that's the thing, less is more sometimes. And that's the other thing I've been given. Like, I don't know if I've just like learned it over the last like six, seven years is how to like, I like being alone, like my alone time. I never used to like that. I used to get have like anxiety from it. And now I'm like, I don't, I like my space. I like my time. I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm comfortable with myself now. And I wasn't before you know, and I have, you know, my cat or whatever at home. And I'm just like, and working out now is a different, I mean, yes, I love it, and but I'm not like that, like addicted to it, but it's, I just keep, I keep wanting to be better because unfortunately, you know, I was having cause that's the other thing too, is you can cause damage to your body. That's irreversible. You know, you can only fix so many things, you know? Yeah. And, um, so that's been a struggle for me. 
and getting back to where, where I want to be because I want to be like Dr. Carla, <laughs> like killing the weights and stuff <laughs> like that. And even just getting my spots right. And it's just all the little milestones. I mean, I do, I do have to take a step back or two once in a while. I realize that wow, Jody, you know, you really did kick some butt. Like you, you've gone through a lot of stuff <laughs> and it's okay to be yeah. where you're at. So yeah, and sometimes getting so caught up in like, how do I get better? How do I get better? And sometimes it's just like acknowledging where you've come from. Yep. And I think that's one thing we do a lot with our athletes here when they get frustrated if they're they don't feel like they're making progress where they want to, where they need to. Yeah. Another thing I'll tell people is okay, you're 46. If you kept the same exact level of fitness, and even if you didn't improve for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Do you know how freaking fit of a 56 year old you'd be? <laughs> I'm like, I want it. <laughs> and so sometimes when you look at that, we get this competitive vibe. And then we also have to look at like, what's the long haul? Like, what's the longevity of, of this? Because if you can maintain this fitness for the next 10, 20, 30 years, mm-hmm. you'd be able to rock an 86 year old. I want to be. <laughs> I do. And it was funny, you guys. So I went down, so my weight had gone down. You know, I lost about, it was about 150 pounds. And then, at my lowest and I was really scrawny looking you know and flabby and whatever like your skin that's the other thing when you lose weight like that the skin never <laughs> goes away I, I mean you can have surgeries and things like that but it's just like and I'm super clean eating as well and a lot of people aren't but even that you know five plus years of super clean and I'm just like so frustrated <laughs> with the skin part and so that unfortunately because it, it it stretches and it never wants to go fully back. But, yep. um, but Dr. Carla looks great. I mean, you had a baby like what, 15 months ago or so. Or, that, yeah. And it just goes to show you, you know, people just think, oh yeah, I had a kid. So, you know, or, I, or I'm over 40 now, my life is over. And I can tell you, no, like my <laughs> life started over at 40 in a good way. And so in a lot of it is up here. The mental part has been the, the biggest struggle for me. And but I had lost all that weight and now I've been training and, you know, now I'm like bulking back up. So it's kind of funny because I'm like, I don't really want that, <laughs> but it's just happening that way. <laughs> so I'm like, well, it's good to be strong. You know, you know I will tell you <laughs> as women age, it's really hard to put on muscles. Well, so maybe be grateful for the time that you have I am um, for your bone density <laughs> because women over 40, it is very hard to put muscle on um, just due to hormonal imbalances. So yeah. Just maybe chalk that one up for a little win in the longevity cap- category. I got to stop looking at the scale. That's the thing, <laughs> the numbers, but like, yeah, how do you feel? That's the question. How do you feel? I That's right. And, but then I can't fit in, like I had this suit jacket. And I'm like, I can't fit into this shirt anymore. Well, I guess my arms can't. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's a good thing. <laughs> Stretchy clothes. <laughs> well, if you are in a position where you need somebody to reach out to, you're stuck, um, Jordy and I would be happy to yeah. chat with you. Um, you can look up People's Rising Academy or EHP Performance, and we would love to help you out. Thanks yeah. for listening today. Thanks, guys. Have a big human heart state. <laughs>